Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. I sell houses on my on the regular, that's my main job, but podcasting is just a lot of fun and a blast getting to know people too, so um, welcome to the podcast. It's a beautiful, frigid March day here in Johnson City, but it's going to be, it's like 30 two degrees right now and it's going to be 75 here in a couple of days. So <laughs> I'm excited for you guys to get to know my new friend, Hannah Dedrick with Blue Willow Bridal and the Willow Room. Is, did I say your last name correctly? Dedrick. Dedrick. Sorry. See, I already <laughs> screwed it up, but she's really sweet. You're going to get to know her and welcome to the podcast, Hannah. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You had said you've been on lots of podcasts, so you're a pro, right? Yeah. So <laughs> many. First podcast. Um, so first things first. Let's um, let's ask you, what do you love about Johnson City? Johnson City Living Podcast. Everybody wants to know, like, what's the best thing in Johnson City in your mind? Um, what I love about Johnson City so much. I love how big and small it is at the same time. Mm-hmm. We have like a great community down here. Who, I mean, just so many businesses support each other vocally I mean show up for you and it's felt like that since the day I moved here um, but I also just feel like Johnson City's thriving and growing but also small enough that you just feel like you have a shot here yeah like even the smallest dream you feel like there's room for it to grow here hmm. which is what I love and is really why I'm here so that's a great perspective I haven't heard that um yeah but I love it and I do believe it's true like we're small yeah. enough to you can do whatever you want. And I think if you if you want to hustle, right, you can do. Oh, yeah, it can any, happen here. There's you can make it happen right. anywhere, I think. Yeah. So, uh, but Johnson City does have a good space um, to grow stuff. So it is cool. And we're up and coming and we're you're right there in the growth point. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Elgin, South Carolina. Elgin, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Where is that in relation to a That's bigger okay. town like a Charleston or a it, Columbia? It's like 25 minutes, like. Pet, or outside of Columbia, so it's okay. near. A lot of people know where Camden, South Carolina, mm-hmm. is. So, right around there. Yeah, in between Columbia and Florence. Okay, yeah. I've been through there a bunch because we go to the beach a lot. Carly and I are always like yes. checking off the the stops on the way. How did you get to Johnson City from Elgin? Like, tell us your your story. Uh, so a few years ago, um, so I managed a store, a bridal store in Lugoff, South Carolina. And I would vacation in Maggie Valley Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I would vacation with the family, actually, that owned the bridal store. Oh, um, cool. Because it was family-owned. And I didn't get vacation days, technically. They took – it was all family that owned it and worked there, so they just shut down for family vacations. (laughs) And that was my vacation. So I I started – they just became family to me, so I started just taking vacation with them. And they would go to Maggie Valley a lot, and so I would go there. Well, then I ended up just going there on my own, um, and I would, took my mom there probably almost four years ago now. And I've just always been, I think I've all, which I didn't know, but I figured out I've always had an entrepreneur-geared mind. Mm-hmm. And so I was just ready to do something on my own, and I decided I thought I could own a bridal store my own and I'd managed that one for a couple years and so I just needed the place to do it so long story short I actually just went back home and googled bridal stores in North Carolina because I knew I wanted to go back to the mountains Mm -hmm. if I moved Mm -hmm. and I was just looking for a city with the least amount of red dots of bridal stores gotcha and that could support one. Yeah. And ended up seeing Johnson City right over the border, obviously, and it only had one red dot, and it was David's Bridal. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way that's right. 60,000 people, and there's only one bridal store. And But it was. That was the only one. So there used to be Massingales, which I mm-hmm. did find out, found out. I used to get it, like, that's where we, <clears throat> the guys would go get tucked up for, yes. for um proms and stuff yeah so i went to mass and goes long so time. so many of my brides their moms tell me that's where they got mm-hmm. their dress and that's yep. i mean it was huge here but they had been out when i was looking they'd been closed for about two years so david's really was the only store here so i found a spot and i moved up here like three months after that 
Dream started. <laughs> that's a, well, and that's like brilliant. Good move for you to write, see, like look at. Um, I had a friend, John Mark Woodard, he told us to look for the hole in the market, and it's called mm-hmm. a Creneau. And so okay. if you can find the Creneau, like a hole in the market, like, oh, I'm looking at Johnson City, and there is no pistachio ice cream store, right? You know, like, yeah. so I'm going to open my own pistachio ice cream store, and so okay. um, whatever that is, you know. And But anyway, that was Creneau. genius. You did. Good job. <laughs> Good job. So how long ago did you arrive in Johnson City? So I started looking for spaces in September of 2019, and then I found this, y'all's next door, right. actually, found that space, and I came to look at it and signed the lease, and I moved up here November 11th of 2019, and I opened on December 3rd. December 3rd, 2019, and then yeah. a lot of stuff happened in between then, right? Just yeah, so I opened Obviously, <laughs> and then and closed. COVID hit <laughs> in like three months, and I had to close. Yeah. Um, How hard was that, like, with your dream? Um, It was tough, but I always tell people, number one, from taking a dream and manifesting it so quickly in such a short amount of time mm-hmm. um, and just, like, throwing my whole life off track that I'd built back home and just moving here to a city where I didn't know anybody – and opening a store, and it was a lot in four months. And so by the time COVID hit in March, I don't know. It, I, I mean, COVID wasn't a blessing by any means, mm-hmm. but um, I just I took that month off that I had to be closed and just took a break, mental break, and it was nice. And my only goal when I opened for my first year was to break even. Mm-hmm. And so I always told people, they were like, gosh, I mean, how did it affect your business? And I said, well, I guess technically I could say it didn't. I didn't have last year's numbers to compare right, to. Right, right. It's all fresh. Nothing to compare to. Yeah. So as long as I was still in business, I was fine. Like that, my goal was accomplished. So, I mean, honestly, I didn't really have to have a negative outlook because I was like, well, I'm still in business. And that was my goal. <laughs> so. Awesome. Here I am. We're still in business. Still in business. (laughs) All right. So tell the listeners about your business. Like, I guess you want to start, you have a few different ones. You told me you have three different businesses and I only mentioned two. So you want to go start off with Blue Willow Bridal? Yes. So Blue Willow Bridal, um, we offer wedding gowns, mother's dresses, bridesmaids, and tuxedos. Nice. So we're pretty much a full service one-stop shop is what we try to be. Now, do you rent out tuxedos for kids going to prom and that kind of thing? We do. Okay. So we're rental and we're for purchase. Gotcha. Yep. Nice. And then tell, like, I'm a guy. I've never managed a bridal shop. Like, I, we did walk by because you're kind of down there on the, um, across from the train or the train station. We don't have a train station, but we have a bus station. The bus station. And right yep. beside like, Atlantic Ale, kind of right in that area. Yeah. Right? Like, we're by Watauga. And, yeah. Yeah. Atlantic. Down from Trek. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so tell us, like, what is a bridal store about? Like, I mean, obviously, ladies come in there, they're getting married, they want to get their dress, right? But there's so, a whole lot more to it than that, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into bridal. I'd say if there was something that Blue Willow specializes in and is my goal is um, customer service, for sure. So the bridal store that I worked at and I was trained at, that was our, I mean, that was our whole goal. Everything was about customer service, and that's what we were known for. Um, and I wanted to do the same thing with my bridal store. I mean, a, a bride looks forward to that day, an hour and a half appointment, shopping for her one dress, mm. like her entire life. And it's my job to make sure that it's perfect. So, and I, we take that very seriously. Yeah, that's a big so, deal. So, um, I mean, pretty much Blue Willow, we only have two dressing rooms. Um, And so during the week, we're open Tuesday through Saturday. And Tuesday through Friday, we only have one appointment at a time. So when you make your appointment, it is fully about you. No one else is in the store but you and your group. So you have our full time and attention for an hour and a half of your appointment. Um, So I don't think it really gets more one-on-one or more full service than that. Um, Saturdays, we do have two appointments at a time, um, but we have separate viewing areas and we have two consultants. So you still get full attention from one consultant. And yeah, we try to just make that whole process simple, easy. I think it's rare 
nowadays to be able to call a store and do business with someone and always talk to the same person. Right. Or one of two people. I have a manager now at Blue Willow. So you just know when you call any issues, anything you're worried about, you're going to talk to Hannah or Sarah. Yeah. And that that's just comforting, especially for a brat. So. For sure. Yeah. Especially like if, yeah, that's like the thing, right? The dress, right? And yeah. They're like. The dress. <laughs> you got to have the one thing. <laughs> the dress. For that day. Yeah. And it better be that. Yeah, you know, I don't care if y'all show up or not. I was about to say, a, I a lot good. of things could go wrong, but, but you know, if the bride feels beautiful and she's happy and I, I think she can manage a lot of other things during her day as long as she feels put together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, like, because this is just guy, me, Mitch, you know, be over there nodding his head probably too. Like, <laughs> how many dresses do, like, what's the average dress trying on? Like, what does that look like? Numbers. Like, are they, um, is it 10? Is it two? Is it 15? I don't know. I'd probably say probably 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Honestly. Yeah, gotcha. I'd say it depends too on if we get a girl who's come in and we're the first bridal store she's been to. Oh, I gotcha. Or if we're the second or third. Right. So she's already kind of ruled out some stuff. Right. Sometimes yeah. if we're the second or third, she's figured out what she wants and she's trying to find it. Gotcha. So sometimes that takes a lot less dresses. Um, whereas if we're the first stop for a bride, we may, we might be trying to go through five to eight figuring out what she wants yeah. and then we've narrowed it down and can go, you know, through just a few more. Okay. Now so. you've been doing this a while. Like what, how long have you been in the bridal total now? I'd probably say I'm going on eight years. Eight years. So can you like when she, the bride lady walks in, right? You know, all your dresses cause mm-hmm. you bought them all and mm-hmm. you're like, are you, you kind of go, okay, it's going to be probably either that one or that one, you know, like you just kind of can see it. And then, Sometimes. Yeah, but other times you might get surprised maybe. Sometimes know. we do get surprised. Um, but I will say it. bridal is a very specialized field, and it does take a lot of training. Like I don't say this lightly because I never brag myself, but it's definitely a profession that I feel like I'm definitely professional at. Yeah. So. We would always say, like, if a girl comes in and she has something that she thinks she wants, we will obviously always explore that. Because right. a lot of times it is what she wants. Right. Um, but sometimes we just know. And so we call that dress a wild card. Okay. So sometimes we'll let a bride explore what she thinks she wants. Mm-hmm. And then when they figure out that's not what they want and they don't know where else to go, because that's just what they thought they wanted mm-hmm. and they don't know how to think outside that realm. Because mm-hmm. you don't wear dresses every day. So yeah. most of the time a girl comes in and wants a dress similar to kind of the style she wears every day. Yeah. Her and a lot of times it's the opposite. So then we'll just say, hey, can we, do you mind if we just pull a wild card? Because <laughs> just from seeing her Try on and figuring out her tastes and, and her and body type, demeanor, and like we just can, can say, know like I I've got a dress for you. Oh. And a lot of times it's you know a it's lot of times one. that's the one and that's the wild card pool. So that's cool. Yeah, but sometimes a girl does come in, she knows what she wants, and then she puts it on, and that is what she wants. Yeah. So you know those are easy. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of in the same space like we you know people come and say hey we want this house or this is the kind of house we're looking for and so then it's my job um i don't know if you're familiar with donald miller he wrote a book called story brand and he's all about um helping us so we you and i are guides and so we don't want to ever be the hero like right we don't want to be the hero we want to like um you know han solo or luke skywalker they're the heroes of star Mm -hmm. wars right but yoda kind of was guiding luke skywalker and so we want to be yoda like that helps the person see where they can go and what they can do. And so we're the guides. And so yeah. how do we help make that person the hero? Cause it's not about us. Right. It's just about, and just so it sounds like, and yeah, it sounds like you're a yeah. great guide to help <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Um, curating, getting your dresses. My wife, she's been buying, um, clothes on another, she's got a little side business going. And so she's curating clothes. And so how do you get your, Curate your dresses. How do you find them? Um, where do they come from? Talk about that, just because I'm curious. Like, So I carry, so in bridal, or there's multiple fields, but bridal, um, <clears throat> you carry certain designers. So, and the only reason you carry certain designers, either you like their style, you like their brand. Like my designers specifically, I carry them. I, they're the same lot, not 
all the brands, but a lot of the same brands I carried at the store in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I knew those brands. They also represent and uphold amazing customer service. So that's why I carry them. High quality. Um, Yes, high quality and also very reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. Um, But in Bridal, you kind of pick your designers, and you can only carry a select few because you have to meet minimums with those designers. Uh, I got you. So you order from them twice a year. And you have a minimum number of gowns you have to order from them. Of course, you can order more, but, right. you know. Um, so we carry four designers okay. um, at Blue Willow. We carry Justin Alexander, Lillian West, uh, Stella York, and Essence of Australia. And that's our, I mean, that's our max. So gotcha. also, even if budget wasn't, I mean, budget's a huge thing, but even if budget wasn't, there's only so much space, you know, and you have to meet a minimum mm-hmm. every year. I mean, we probably accumulate 60 new dresses a year. Oh, wow. And they're samples, so you don't sell them off the rack. So they never stop accumulating. Oh, wow. So you you just constantly seem like you're outgrowing a space. Um, or weeding them out. Like this one yes. was two years ago. Still. And they will get discontinued eventually, and then you can sell them off the rack um, or just retire them and mm-hmm. donate them, whatever. But it just not as quickly as they accumulate. So Gotcha. Yeah. All right, I have no clue what a wedding dress costs. What are what's ballpark like? So for a blue willow, we say our average is probably fifteen to eighteen hundred. Okay. So we have some under and we have some over, gotcha. but they mainly land in that range. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Anything else you want to share about blue willow before we jump into the willow room? Um, Where'd you come up with the name blue willow? Um. I always say there's a better story for that. Um, I always say that. <laughs> Pretty much, um, I was sitting in the car with my old boss that uh-huh. owned the store I used to manage. Yeah. Um, and she's always supported my dream. She was an amazing boss. And she's actually my brand rep for Justin Alexander now, one of nice. the designers I carry. That's so cool. I still see her and talk to her all the time. That's the family I used to go on vacation How with. How cool is that? Time, yeah. So. <laughs> they still vacation in Maggie Valley and come up and see me all the time. Isn't that neat how the Lord works out stuff? Yes. And she's amazing. So, um, I mean, pretty much, I don't even, I lost my train of thought. Where you were going with the name? How did we come up with Blue Willow? So you're sitting in the car with your boss. We were sitting in the car when we were coming up. She supported it. Um, She had recently sold Evelyn's. Um, And I wanted something blue in the name just because something blue is huge in the bridal world. Something borrowed something. So, um, and then we were just kind of, we took that. We were just blue something. And obviously bridal is a good way to end it. And then finally I was like, she was like, what are some of your favorite things? Like, what's your favorite flower? What's your favorite tree? What's your favorite, you know, just plenty of things. And I was like, willow tree. And then it was like, she said, well, about blue willow. We were just naming a million things. I was like, that's it. And she's like, what was it? And I was like, Blue Willow. <laughs> and she was like, Blue Willow Bride. I was like, yep, that's it. That's it. And then that, was, that was the name. Yep, just, that's it. That's great. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. All right. So you're obviously not too busy with the bridal thing. You want to open up an event space, right? And so <laughs> yeah. let's go talk about the Willow Room. And you're busy with that now, too. Yes, so the Willow Room is kind of in its beginning, beginning stages. So I just acquired that space in January. Okay. So, or maybe technically December, but um, Charlotte's was, Charlotte's Florals is what it was previously, and what a lot of people know it as, and honestly, it's still Charlotte's Florals to me in my head. Um, Because we connected, she opened right about the same time, Blue Willow did. Okay. Um, and she set up in my shop a couple times, and we've supported her. I've set up in her space a couple times because she ran her flower business out of there, but she also rented it out as an event space, and she did markets there, and it was just like a community space. And everyone loves that space. Yeah, it's really <laughs> Anybody cool. that knows of it loves that space. So – when I used to get my car worked on there a long time ago. Yes. So I know a lot of people that know it as the <laughs> That's how old I am. It used right. to be. Yeah. 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 Um, so I've only ever known it as Charlotte's. But um, when she, so she, she, her and her husband got pregnant. And so, you know, we, since I'd set up there and we've just, we've just talked a lot over the past couple of years. She knew I loved that space. Um, and I had opened 
Hunter Blue and Irwin, and I had talked about possibly opening on a Johnson City location. Um, and so she reached out to me when she was thinking about um, closing Charlotte's and was like, would you be interested um, in taking over my lease for it? And so, you know, me and Matt talked about it for a little while, <laughs> whether I should take on a third business. And um, we did. We decided to take the leap and do it. So I I was had the first mindset that it could possibly be a second location for Hunter Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I just realized I didn't have the manpower or the time mm-hmm. to commit to a full-time um, off operating boutique in Johnson City. So... We are kind of doing both. So the plan and what it has already been, the events have kind of taken off. So I opened it up as an event venue. Um, it doesn't even have a website yet. So we're creating that this week, actually. You're um, hearing it here. Cutting edge on the yeah, <laughs> Yeah. So the website has supposed to have been up, and it's not, you know, things take precedence. And so anyway, it's been rented out as a event space. We've already done a market there. We We'd like to do many more markets there. Um, those were a hit at Charlotte's. It supports local businesses, local vendors, especially small businesses that with people that have full-time jobs mm-hmm. and operate their businesses out of their homes. Yep. You know, markets are a great way for them to set up yep. and sell, you know, um, <clears throat> to the community. So mm-hmm. I still want to do markets there, um, but I also want to use it as a Hunter Blue pop-up. So. We would like to create a calendar where Hunter Blue pops up regularly Mm -hmm. in certain days. So she still has an established presence here in Johnson City, but it's not full time. Gotcha. So it's kind of a community um, space with lots of different options. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds like it. But it is a small, its main is a small event space. And that's what it's been rented out for baby showers, rehearsal dinners, micro weddings. That's cool. So Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it's had a couple weddings there when Charlotte owned it. Yeah. And it's precious. <laughs> Neat. I um I always like going across the street to the Shamrock, well, kind of yes. diagonally. And yes. they make an unbelievable milkshake. Yeah, and so. Jack's actually who owns it. So oh, does that's he? My I landlord. didn't know that. Yes. Oh, I love yeah. Jack Cox. He's such a good dude. <laughs> yeah. Jack, you should come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. He is such a good I'll guy. I'll talk to him. Yeah, I love going in there just because you smell the tobacco, too. Yes. Yeah, it's just. I love, yes. Going I in the Shamrock is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. So anytime I need a key made, I usually go there because they make it old school style where they still are grinding it like the way they used to do it. So. Yeah. All right. So tell, tell, so that's Charlotte or old Charlotte's, which old is Charlotte's. now yep. the Willow Room. Yeah. And then we've got Hunter Blue, and that's in Irwin. And that's in Irwin. Tell Tennessee. us a little bit more about that. Um, so Hunter Blue, that was my second endeavor. Um, I was actually looking, because I told y'all I lived upstairs of y'all's space right here um, when I first moved to Johnson City. And I lived here for the first year and a half. And then I moved, found Irwin in my time here and mm-hmm. wandering around. And Isn't it just a cool little town? I love Irwin. Yeah. But Irwin reminds me a lot of Elgin, where I'm from. So oh, okay. it's very small. I know Johnson City is a, probably a small big city, but it was still a big city to me. And so Irwin, it was very convenient being above my store for the first year. Extremely convenient and right. being so close. But I, Irwin's a lot quieter. Um so it feels a lot more like home. But I do live above my store in downtown Irwin as well. Oh, cool. Um, but it's still, it's a lot smaller. Um, so when I moved to Irwin, Matt was actually, my fiance was looking to possibly purchase a building. Um, and so I was like, well, you know, if you if you end up buying this building, you know, I could open my business downstairs, you know, and then I'm looking to move, so I'll just rent upstairs from you, too. <laughs> Maybe you'll give me a deal on rent. <laughs> yeah. Since we're getting so, married. You and know, stuff. yeah. <laughs> he got a good deal with fiance and vice versa. There so, you go, right? Yeah, it's a win-win. It's, it was great. People helping people. <laughs> so I, we ended up doing that, and Hunter Blue was actually supposed to be a second bridal store because um, that's my area of expertise. Sure. Um, fashion... Regular women's wear is not my area of expertise, but I just, like three months out, I just switched gears, and I love Irwin, and the community down there is also very strong. They have a strong will to want to grow, and the only reason I 
originally wanted to open a business in Irwin. It's very small. It's still um, very much the underdog, um, but with a lot of potential. And they have the will to grow. And they've taken such great care of their downtown. They have done a great job. It's amazing down there. And um, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind opening a business there was bridal is where by appointment. So we can pretty much draw business from two hours out. You know, you don't have to have a bustling downtown. That's a good point. To necessarily survive. Right, I didn't think about that. So that's what I was going to do. But when we were working on the building, I just, the community there, I knew that a bridal store that was closed other than by appointment wasn't what the downtown needed. So I opened a boutique. So it was a walk-in. They very much needed a walk-in store down there. And so that's what we are. And now my goal for that new business is just to break even. So, and I told Erwin, I was like, you know, if if I can break even here, then then I'll do it. Yeah, you know. So that's what we're doing, you know. And and Erwin has very much supported Hunter Blue. I mean, she's done even better than what I ever thought a walk-in store down there has. Mm -hmm. And I'm very thankful for the community there and how they support us. So. Yeah, we're doing well, but it's that is a learning curve. So, Aslan, who is on here before, that yeah. is her professional field, right? Um, and she is amazing at it. And it is a, I am learning as I go. Yeah, and I think <laughs> so. you know, and everybody, I don't think you ever figure it out. So I'm um, yeah, a few yeah. trips down around the sun past you for sure. And so, bridal yeah, is a well old machine, and um. The boutique world is not for me. So, yeah. yeah. So you're working, you're figuring it out, mm-hmm. though. But that stretches you, I think, and it helps you yes. grow. And so, you, and it shows you, like, oh, I love this or I don't, you know? And so, um, I yeah, do love I think, clothes and I love fabrics and I love fashion. Um, it's just you would not think that those bridal and that field would be so far apart. <laughs> well, I think it, it, well, yeah, it's hard, they right? Because you, well, I mean, you could have any size person or age person come yep. in to, and get a, a bridal dress mm-hmm. and you're looking at samples and so you can then order one right. i'm assuming right that's exactly. close to that yep. but instead if i walk in off the street you're like hey dude um we only have pants that are you know 30 inch right. long and i'm sorry right. you don't have it you know and so i can't help you today you know mm-hmm. and so it's, to have enough inventory and carly was talking about this too have enough inventory to match up with everybody it's tricky you know sometimes so that is one thing i've learned very quickly was you have to figure out what your style is and be true to who you are yeah because you cannot please the masses and that's in bridal it's easier to please the masses so um but fashion you cannot buy to suit everyone's taste yeah so you have to stay true to who your taste is Mm because that's the only way you can buy I don't know, true to who you are and Mm. true, very just good style and represent the store so it looks cohesive. Right. Um, And so I had to learn very quickly, I can't please everyone and that is okay. Yeah. (laughs) Right. You know? You can't please everyone. I mean, that's why there's there's a mall and that's why there's hundreds of other boutiques. I mean, even me and Aslan, I I love Aslan and I love her style. Our stores are very, very different. Yeah. And honestly, they would complement each other. If we are both downtown here, mm-hmm. um, they would complement each other very well because yeah. we are very different. That's cool. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, the family that you kind of worked with. Who else has influenced you over the years while you're getting into your business? Um, probably... Honestly, my parents, I guess. Um, I guess my mom, my dad's, my mom and dad worked, um, they both worked at Nationwide, actually. Oh, cool. um, My whole life. And then my mom retired on disability because she got MS when I was like 12. Mm -hmm. So she was at home a lot, almost all through high school. Mm -hmm. And then my dad started working from home. (laughs) And so they're both at home a lot. And so that kind of. My mom has always, I've always had a million ideas Mm -hmm. and I never knew how to focus them into one thing. And so I went to college um, for volleyball. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh, cool. But I just. Where'd you go to college? I went to Lander. It's in Greenwood, South Carolina. Nice. So 
Um, it's just a little D2, which thank goodness I would have never survived <laughs> at a D1 school. Um, it was small enough that you got like free tutoring whenever you needed. Mm -hmm. It was just, you felt like you knew everybody, right. which was great for me. Um, and so I went for business because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And for marketing management, and I graduated, and they pushed me and supported me all through college. I was about two hours away from home, so it wasn't too far. Um, and my mom just always listened to my million and one ideas, and I don't think, I never felt like they doubted me that I would ever figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like, I never felt any form of stress from them. Yeah. And now that I'm older, it, it blows my mind that they never seem stressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I just yes. always was just, I mean, I, I graduated college not knowing what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, and I wasn't worried about it, which maybe that's why they were. I don't know. But I graduated, and I had a bartending job at that time that I loved. Yeah. And school was not easy for me. I had to try very hard. So I just took a break. I love where I lived, and I never really felt like I got to enjoy college because mm -hmm. I had to try very hard mm -hmm. at school. And so I just took a mental break, and I was like, you know, I really like my job right now, so I'm just going to work that. And then I ended up meeting Jody, um, who was my boss at Evelyn's, and she hired me. I'd never been retail, and so I moved back home, and it just felt right. And they just supported me. anything I ever want to do. They just supported me, and they were like, "Okay, yeah, if you think that's right, you should do it." I moved home. I did that, and then I actually built a house um, on my parents' property. And then six months after it was finished, I decided I wanted to open my own business in Johnson City. And they were just like, okay, all right, well, that's what you feel like you can do. All right, do. we I got, mean, uh, got just, this house over here. That they, you <laughs> yeah, they were like, well, if you feel like you can rent it out, Hannah, then do it. And so I actually rented it out to, I had, I worked at Evelyn's and I also worked at a tanning bed. And my manager at the tanning bed was looking for a house and I moved out and she moved in. There you go. And I rented my home back home and moved here. Nice. <laughs> and they've just never blinked an eye. So I think I've only been successful, honestly, because I never felt doubted. Yeah. Ever. Right. I felt like they always were just like, you can do whatever you want to do. And if you feel like it's feasible and you can make it work. Yeah. I mean, I definitely knew my whole life that they weren't going to pay my way. Mm -hmm. But anytime they're like, if you feel like you can do it. And you make it work, then we support you. And yeah. So here yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah, Carly and I tell um, our boys, yeah, we're you can do whatever you want. You just got to put your mind to it, right. you know. And yeah. we believe in you. You can. Yeah. They always had a great crash pad for me because yeah. I'm a worst case scenario thinker. Yeah. So when I want to do something, I think of the worst case scenario. Yeah. And if I'm okay with the worst case scenario, then I'll do it. Yeah. And so when I was going to open my bridal store here, I was like, worst case scenario, I crash and burn, and I have to move back home. And I was okay with that. So <laughs> I got a house on my parents' property. I'll be yeah, all right. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll just have to. Which is a good. Dream, like, I don't know. I'm learning. My wife is very. She's good at like saying, "Okay, what could happen?" You know. Right. And so Worst I think it's scenario. a wonderful skill yeah. to have, and so <laughs> I think it serves you well for sure. You can't live in that going like, "Okay, this is going to happen," but that's what's right. the worst case could happen. Right. I'm on the other side of the spectrum. Like, oh, what's the best case scenario? Like, you know. You're gonna have like a thousand franchises or whatever, you know. So right. I don't know. Yeah. So you know that'd be great too. Yeah. yeah. What's the future for <laughs> um, for you and your businesses? You think what do, What are you looking to accomplish in the next two, three, five years? Um, I would say to continue to grow. I would love for Blue Willow, um, definitely to eventually own her own space. Uh, that's probably my next goal. Honestly, my next goal would probably be to own my own home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Right now, I live in the apartment above my store, yeah. and I would love to own a home. And then after that, I would love Blue, for Blue Willow to be able to purchase her purchase. own space. I like how you have given her a personality. She is her own entity. <laughs> that is for sure. That's hilarious. <laughs> so she it. she has served me well yeah. over the past few years, and she definitely deserves her own space. And I hope that we can do that in the next couple of years. Yeah. So. All right. Give. I think you said Matt, the fiance, right? Yes. So tell us, you're getting married. Do you have a dress picked out yet? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's good. When's Multiple, that happening? Multiple, obviously. Multiple dresses. <laughs> so you don't have one yet. Uh, you got a. I ha I do. I have them. They're yes. They're. How many are you gonna wear? 
Probably <laughs> just two. You can wear two dresses on your wedding day? Oh, absolutely. Really? I didn't even I'll know that. I'll try my hardest. Mitch, did you know you can wear three. two dresses? No, he's shaking his head, too. Most people wouldn't. It's definitely over the top, but I was like, <laughs> what? But I own a bridal suit. I was going to say, that's, Come on. what would I they gonna... expect from me, obviously? Right. Walk down. <laughs> two ladies later, she's in a different yeah. one. Okay, that sounds like fun. All right. Yeah. What does Matt do? He um, works in heavy equipment. Oh, cool. And he's his goal is... Um, I think in life is to he wants to acquire um, rental property. Yeah. So that kind of is how the started with the building in Irwin. Uh huh. Um, that was his first building. Um, and since then we've acquired a second. And then him and his family also own the camp at Buffalo Mountain. Cool. So um, his dad owns the heavy equipment business, um, and that's where he's at today. So they also you gonna give him a shout out in case also, anybody wants to go buy heavy equipment. They don't need any more work. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> he's gonna be like, they, no. Man? They work for two um, contractors. Oh, I got gotcha. So they gotcha. just build like the footers for houses and oh, stuff nice. like that. Yeah, gotcha. So okay. that's what they do. Cool. Yeah. So they're more Those like contract are, workers. Yes. But gotcha. I didn't know if they were selling heavy. Equipment. No, you no. You need a big old bulldozer. No, they okay. move. They move dirt. <laughs> they move dirt. <laughs> yeah. I like it. It needs to be moved. It moves dirt. And then they own the we, – that's actually how we met. The, the Camp Buffalo Mountain's a wedding venue. Okay. Um, and we met through Studio Wed, which Studio Wed's just a entity where a lot of different wedding professionals um, can join and talk and mingle and bounce ideas. So it's caterers, photographers, venues. Huh. I mean, anything you think of. Yeah. Um, bridal stores, obviously. Yeah. So we met at their Christmas party um, in December of 2019. Nice. Cool. When I moved here. So, yeah. And, yeah, I guess it's history since. Yeah, the rest is history, and yeah, you guys are going to be married history. forever. So yeah. that's exciting. How can our listeners connect with you, Miss Hannah? So you can. We are very active on Instagram, social media. So you can call us at Blue Willow. Um, we have a store number. We have a website. You can book your appointments through there. And you can also message us on Instagram. Very active on there. Very responsive. So cool. Call, email, DM how, us. How far <laughs> out do I need to book my dress appointment? Like if I'm looking to. You normally need to pour, purchase your dress um, about eight months out from your mm. wedding. So normally it takes around. So you got to be a planner. Four to, to five married. months for it to come in, and then about two months to get it altered. So gotcha. Okay. Eight months is a comfortable. Obviously, we've done way quicker turnarounds. <laughs> way. <so. laughs> I need no, to but that is ideal. Week. Yeah. 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 No. We have we have actually done weddings in two weeks before, so that's awesome. It's possible. But, so you can do it all. But don't do that to yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Last question: What gets you fired up? Like, what is like just like get jacked up over? What is it? In a good way. In a great way. Yeah, obviously. I don't want to get angry. I don't get fired, fired up in a up. great way. I'm too positive. Like, I would never go negative. No, like I know. That. It's very hard to make me mad. Um, gosh, but it gets me fired up. I feel like I'm pretty high in an energy person. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, a new project. Yeah. So I very much operate... Um, I'd like to say organized chaos, but yeah. it's just chaos. It's just um, chaos. But a new project. So okay. I, I think that's why me and Matt, my fiance, work so well together. Yeah. Um, he has a lot of things going on. Um, and I love a new project. I like to do things with my hands. Mm -hmm. So anytime we can change something, start something new, renovate something, start a new business, it just, I mean, I don't sleep at night, so. <laughs> That's what gets, that gets fired me up. very I like excited. It. I yeah. love it. I love it. Anything else you want to share that I didn't ask you? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> you thank, covered it. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really enjoyed our conversation. I know our listeners will too. They, um, yeah, if you need a wedding dress, obviously come to Blue Willow. And I think you're going to have an, a, just an amazing experience. Hannah seems like just a wonderful young lady. So come support her business, help downtown businesses if you need to buy a home sell a home or invest in real estate we do all of that and we would love to help you so until next time i'm colin johnson with the colin and carly group and keller williams hope you have a great spring day